Welcome to this video lesson which focuses on the intersection of two planes. For the prior knowledge, you should know lines, planes, and augmented matrix before watching this video. When we have two planes, there are three different formations that we can have for them. For one, we can have the two planes being parallel to each other and not touching. We can also have the two planes being coincident, meaning that one plane is directly on top of the other one, meaning that they share all the same points and they're pretty much the same plane. Planes can also be intersecting, but if they intersect, they cannot intersect at a point, they must intersect at a line. Let's look at an example of each. We're going to start with an example for parallel planes, and these are parallel planes that are not intersecting. So we're going to have two different planes written in their Cartesian form. And we're going to try to solve this using augmented matrix. In the last video, we saw how we can find the point of intersection. But to find point of intersection for equations that have three variables, we need three equations. In this case, we only have two. So let's see how this works. The lowest common multiple for the first value is 9. So we're going to multiply the first row by 3 and add it to row 2 in order to get, in order to get 0. So by doing this, we get 3 times 3 plus negative 9, which is 0. We're going to get 3 times negative 4 plus 12, which is 0. And we're going to get 3 times 2 plus negative 6 is equal to 0. On the right hand side, we're going to get 3 times 10 plus 2, and that gives us 32. If we take the last row, we'll get 0z is equal to 32, and that's just impossible. We cannot have a z value there. It does not exist, and therefore we have no solutions. So whenever you have your last row, when you have the three values on the left hand side is equal to 0, and the right hand side equals a value, that means that it just doesn't work. If there is no solution, it means that there is no intersection, and if they're not intersecting, they must be parallel. You can also test this by looking at their normals, and their normals will also be parallel. They will be a scalar multiply of each other if you were to check. We can also have the two planes being coincidence, meaning that they lie on top of each other and therefore they have infinite number of points that are intersecting. So here is an example and if we were to use an augmented matrix to solve this, we want to get a zero value on the left hand side corner. But when we use a row operation, the exact one is above, we get zero, 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 zero. If you try to solve this, you would get 0 times z is equal to 0, and that means z can be any value, and therefore you would have infinite number of solutions. You could also test this using other methods as well. So you could take the normals, the normals will be parallel, and you can also check to see if they share a point, and you'll see that there are infinite number of share points that they actually share, meaning that the two planes are coincident. Finally, we can have two planes meet at a line or intersect at a line. So let's look at this example. We're going to use the exact same procedure to solve this. So we're going to use augmented matrix and write it down. We're going to try to get the left bottom corner to equal to zero. So in this case, our lowest common multiple is three. So we will do r1 minus 3 times r2, and we, will, and we will get 0, 1, negative 1, negative 2. This means that 3x minus 5y plus 2z is equal to 10, and that y minus z is equal to negative 2. We can use the second equation and let either y or z to equal to t, some sort of parameter. In this case, we're going to let z is equal to t and then use that to solve for y. So in this case, y minus t is equal to negative 2. And if we rearrange that, we will get y is equal to negative 2 plus t. Now what we're doing here is we're forming a parametric equation and we're writing our z, y, and x in terms of t. So basically we've written z and y in terms of t already. So now we are going to use the first row to find x. 
So in this case, we have 3x minus 5y. y is negative 2 plus t plus 2 times z, which is t, is equal to 10. And once we have that, we are going to expand and simplify and rearrange for x. We have 3x plus 10 minus 5t plus 2t is equal to 10. If we simplify this, we will get 3x minus 3t is equal to 0. And when we rearrange and isolate for x, we get x is equal to t. What we have now come up with is the parametric equation for the line, which is the intersection between these two planes. We can convert this into vector form and Cartesian form if we are asked to. In this case, our vector form is 0 negative to 0 plus a parameter t multiplied by a direction vector 1, 1, 1. The concepts of this lesson are summarized here. So if you need to pause the video and write any information down, please feel free to do so. And now we are going to look at an example. In this example, we are to determine the relationship between the planes that are provided. And we're given two planes that are both in Cartesian form. We are going to use augmented matrix. We are going to use the coefficients and the value of the constant. So for the first equation, we'll have 4, negative 8, negative 3, 6. And for the second one, 3, negative 6, negative 1, 2. We want to change the first value of the second row to 0. The lowest common multiple is 12. So we need to multiply the first row by 3 and the second one by 4. And we need to subtract them in order to get that zero value. By doing this, we get 12 minus 12 is equal to zero, negative 24 plus 24 is equal to zero, and we get negative nine plus four, which is equal to negative five. For the constant, we will get 18 minus eight, which is equal to 10. We will use the last row. Here we will get negative five times z is equal to 10. And if we rearrange for z, we will get negative two. So that's the first part of our parametric equation. Now we're going to use the first row. We're going to have 4x minus 8y minus 3z is equal to 6. We know that z is equal to negative 2. So uh, what we are going to do is we're going to let y or x equal to t. In this case, we're going to let y is equal to t and rewrite this. And this becomes 4 times x minus 8 times y, which is t, minus 3 times z, which is negative 2, is equal to 6. Then what we will do is we will simplify it, and, it will, we, and we will end up getting 4x is equal to 8t, or x is equal to 2t when we simplify it. Now we have come up with the parametric equation of the line, which is the intersection of these two planes. We can leave our answer in this form or we can choose to write it in vector form. In this case, vector r is going to equal to our initial position plus t times our direction vector. t is being multiplied by 2, 1, and 0 for x, y, z. And our initial points for x, y, z are 0, 0, and negative 2. I have prepared two questions for you folks to try out on your own and I will try to post a solution to these on a separate video as soon as I can. I hope that this video was helpful in giving you an idea about possible outcomes of two planes in space and how they can intersect. So they can either be parallel, not intersecting, they could be coincidence lying on top of each other, or they could be intersecting at a line. For the next lesson, we will be looking at how three planes can intersect in space. Thank you for watching.